Trochu do kapsy. <laughs> Menší to. Začnu. Ladies and gentlemen. Halo, halo. Muka. Pasta. I'm going to demonstrate how local dialects can make it into general English. Oh, yes. Definitely. Thank you. So, welcome everybody. Um, uh, we are going to talk about Serchisko. You can repeat after me, Serchisko. Excellent. <laughs> and uh, it's, a, it's a project that our team uh, has been working on for some time right now, and uh, we hope to be in production very soon. And uh, I, will, uh, uh, I will ask Vastimil to start. Uh, I will then jump in, show some demo, and we will continue. Okay. So, from the beginning, we will talk uh, about why search is code, why we created it, and why we should use it, if you want. So, uh, we are working with Lukáš for JBoSol development team. It's team uh, sponsored by Red Hat in Red Hat company, and this team is here to, uh, to help JBoS open source community. So we run and maintain some infrastructure for JBoss open source community. So uh, the system, we start to do, do some needs from community. Do you have, anybody have idea how much open source project is in, in JBoss community? We have some we have some for you. Some so giveaways, any so ideas? don't be shy. A lot? Oh. That's a good answer. I think the 460 was close. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, oh. Uh, there is a problem. We aren't able to count it exactly, but it's around 150 uh, projects. Active uh, projects, maybe. Active projects. Maybe. Yeah, active projects un under this community. And if you are uh, talking about this community, uh, there are about ten, tens of thousands of people who are daily active in this community. It means they contribute or they, uh, they use some project projects from this community and are looking for some information. So it, it's a rather huge number of people who are active in this community. And uh, from the beginning to support this community, the community needs, needs some systems to work together, to allow collaboration of people and allow to develop software. So uh, our team on and Red Hat provides some services as part of jbos.org website. If we are talking about uh, services for JBoss community, there are mainly some source code repos. When, you, uh, when the source codes are stored and there are some commits for people, you need some issue tracker to, to, uh, to track issues, uh, bugs, and uh, feature requests for, for the projects. You need some systems for blogs when developer of projects can write their blog post. We need some discussion forums and mailing list where the people are talking about the projects, how to use them, how to evolve them. You need some web pages where there are some basic information about projects. So uh, all these systems and services for community produce some dat data, some content, which, which uh, contains distinct information around the community and around the projects. Uh, idea from the beginning was to provide all necessary services as part of jbos.org website, but unfortunately it can't work. <laughs> uh, because some people simply don't like systems VR, they want to use another approaches for the development. So there was some, uh, some time where some projects start to use another third party services because they, then they are better or they are better for they, they use. Uh, if we are talking about third-party services, there are mainly GitHub.com recently. I don't know if you know. Do you know? Is there anybody who does not know? <laughs> <laughs> it's some system for social coding. There are mainly uh, reposi GitHub repositories for so so source codes, and there are other services. But other projects use, for example, Google Groups for discussions. They use Blogger.com or WordPress for blogs and uh, somebody use Stack Overflow, and there are lots of services around the internet which are used 
by our project members to create some information content around the project. So as a result of this, we see something like this. Uh, as you see, there is probably a problem. We have some users looking about some kinds of information, bugs, blogs, discussions for distinct projects. They are hosted on distinct systems, Blogger, GitHub, and uh, this is a mess. As a result, some people finish with something like this. They are not able to find necessary information. They're, and then, as a result, they don't want, want to use the projects develop on, under the community because they are hard to use for them if they are not able to find necessary information. So uh, we started to talk in our team how to improve the situation and how to support the community in this new era of distributed system and third party services. And this is the reason why we invented Searchisco. Searches. I use the American pronunciation, Searchisco. <laughs> Ah, look, I don't like it, so yeah, Sergisco. No. Okay. Uh, this Sergisco system is uh, some system where you can aggregate information, content from distinct heterogeneous sources, so from all the systems around the internet. You simply aggregate the content, which is relevant to our community, to our projects, then normalize it from some points of view from the point of view of content types, normalize it over projects, on, over contributors. This normalization allows you to find all information, for example, for one project, uh, very simply. You simply told, the, give me all con content for this project and you get it. And by the way, uh, you might uh, remember that GBoss is famous for renaming projects. Uh, it uh, happened recently for Wildfly, for example. So if you try to use public uh, search services like Google, uh, it will take some time for Google to recognize it, and some search engines will never recognize it at all. So that's just you know, a note. And then uh, all the information we grab into Searchisco have to be used. So this system has to provide some uh, APIs for work with this content, some flexible search, and some other additional services we will take later about all these features. But uh, when we invented this Searchisco project, we thought it will be open source. So it is one of projects yeah. under jbot.org umbrella also. So you can contribute, you can use it as, as you want. Uh, next slide and last in this talk before some demo is about some high level architecture of, of this system. So as I told, there are some uh, which one is there are some uh, applications who want to use or provide data to the Searchisco, and this is the Searchisco application alone. Uh, to I will from the beginning talk about these applications which can use the Searchisco, and later we will cover the, the all the features features of the Searchisco itself. So we have for, uh, basic three types of applications. First type of applications is content provider only. It, it's some application who only, which only provides uh, data or content to the search scope, but don't use it alone. Uh, there are basic two types of content providers. There are push content providers. This uh, is push application is able to push data to the search scope alone. So, Simply when some new content uh, uh, is created in the system, it is able to push it. So we, we have some content push API in Searchisco, which should be used by the systems to push content into our system. Then there are some uh, applications which are not able to, to do this push, but uh, provide some API we can ask for data. So as part of Searchisco, we have some pool indexers or um, what's the name from the search word? Uh, uh, reverse or? No, uh, I mean, uh, ah, never mind. We have some components we, which are able to ask these systems. The crawl. crawl, do you Crawl, yeah. yeah, it's right word. Which are able to crawl these systems and take, take content from them and store it in the search scope. Then uh, another part of 
uh, of clients of Cisco or applications which use it are content con consumers. This application only take content from the search Cisco, but don't uh, use it any other way. For example, typical content consumer is some search application, some front end for searching. It use API of search Cisco and shows and presents the content to the users. Or another type of this application should be a planet for blocks. I don't know if you know planet systems. There are block aggregators. They aggregate blocks from distinct sources and show them in some consolidated way. Uh, many companies or, or, uh, or communities have this kind of applications to present blog posts. And then the third, ty third type of uh, applications are some hybrids. So uh, applications which create some content, uh, store it into search Cisco, but then uh, also take the content and use services of search Cisco uh, for, for presentation to users. Uh, for example, in our community, uh, there is some new way how, how to do project pages uh, with ASCII doctors, which is some system which um, generates st static web pages from some templates and some uh, source of content. But when you create an uh, application this way, it is static pages, but you need some dynamic, uh, dynamic uh, features f for this web page. For, for this website, and uh, there, th then you need server with some features, some f functionality which is not able to do on client side. So Cisco can provide some services for this type of applications. Uh, when we look inside the Cisco, at the top we have some APIs. Uh, under the APIs are some business, business logic or some layer of services provided by Cisco. And at the bottom, there are two main subsystems, which is search subsystem and persistent store for content. We will cover these blocks later. And now uh, I will ask Lukas to show you uh, some demonstration what you can do with Search Cisco. Right. So as Vlastimo mentioned, uh, Search Cisco provides REST API. And I will show you how uh, we plan to use it uh, on our website. Uh, we are working on a new search web interface that will allow you to search across uh, all indexed content. Because it is rather hard to show you search Cisco as is because it's only some REST API. So uh, it's just first idea to use curl and show some series of queries and results was not very good for yeah. the demo. So <laughs> We use this application, which is not, not integral part of Search Cisco. It is only one of clients for it. Yeah, it's just one client. It's, uh, it's uh, just a JavaScript application. It's fully running only in, uh, in the browser. And it's calling uh, the REST API of Search Cisco. And uh, the, by the way, the Search Cisco that I'm going to, for example, we can uh, search for something around Java. Uh, we can see that it gives us uh, results that can be represented in a rather tra traditional way, uh, something that you probably are very familiar with. Uh, on top of that, uh, it can give us some interesting aggregations. So, for example, it can tell us uh, how the data that, that is relevant to this query is distributed over the time. And we can, for example, select uh, some range in the data and limit the search results only to a particular time interval. Uh, the same would be possible with technologies. Technologies stands for our projects, for example. So uh, as Vlastimo mentioned, we have maybe 100 or mo more projects. And it will be very useful to be able to uh, narrow down your search results to a particular project. The same with people. The people are the people that are contributing to our uh, open source projects, right? So the same way you would be able to filter uh, by the people or uh, by the content type. Uh, this, this is just a prototype. It's not fully functional, the, the search UI. However, uh, 
it can show you, this is a good example. So for example, this is one document. Uh, it's, uh, this is something that uh, Searchisco can give you on top of, or as an advantage compared to uh, public uh, search services. Because it, it can tell you exactly uh, which project it belongs to and that uh, what kind of content it is. So that it's, for example, issue or threat forum, uh, forum threat in this case. Uh, it can tell you when this document was created and updated for the last time. And here we can see that these many contributors were really participating on this single document. Um, so uh, you can see individual users. Uh, and I will show you later that we can learn more information about users as well. So uh, for example, let's, let's show it right now. We click one, one user. This is really just a quick prototype that I've been working on uh, today and, and yesterday. It's, it's not you know, looking good, but it gives you the, the essence of what kind of information you can pull out from Searchisco. Not only it provides you the search uh, functionality, but uh, it can give you aggregated data about particular objects in this system. In, in this case, we are looking at a contributor. Uh, the same way we can, uh, we can uh, create aggregated view for projects, for example, or other, other entities that, that are available in the system. And uh, uh, I will la later uh, explain that uh, it's actually running on top of uh, Elasticsearch, which is the search technology that is running uh, below. And it, it has very interesting uh, faceting technology, or uh, they rename it to aggregations recently. And uh, that's probably uh, that's probably all I wanted to show you regarding the interface. Uh, do you have any specific questions about this? I mean, maybe you, you can discuss. Oh, there is. Uh, Firefox, what? I don't know it. Uh, it has REST API, so if <laughs> if you can hack it yourself, you know it's not. I would say this it's plugin may be plugin. another client for search is cool. Yeah, it's not a problem. And, and by the way, when I mentioned that uh, it has a REST API and that there is Elasticsearch running uh, underneath. Uh, when you start looking at a search score, you will realize that uh, the search results that you are getting back are actually uh, are actually very similar or identical to the responses from Elasticsearch. So if you are f familiar with Elasticsearch, you will be familiar with these uh, uh, search results. We, we uh, pay attention not to reinvent the wheel and if there are things that work great in Elasticsearch, then we just reuse them and try to expose them directly. Question? Yes. Uh, so you said, uh, or I have understood, uh, your strength is uh, getting uh, many, several heterogeneous uh, sources uh, in one uh, unified format. And yes. Searching I will show you. Uh, my question is, uh, What's, what's, uh, how do you do the ranking and relevance when showing the results? Is it uh, provided by the, the Elasticsearch? Uh, Elas Elasticsearch, yes, yes, I understand. Elasticsearch runs on top of Lucene. So Lucene is a Java li library, very low level library, that uh, has some uh, implementation of uh, relevancy ranking. So, uh, and several options of them, not, not just one way, but several options. And we are di directly using it. Uh, Elasticsearch also provides uh, some some additional features on top of it, like uh, you can uh, use scoring by JavaScript, for example, or uh, you can implement your uh, Java plugin if you want. But those things are typically, or in most cases, not needed. So yes, uh, we it is based on the relevancy, and it's important to say that uh, we can fine tune the relevancy. So for example, we know that uh, I don't know the. The subject of the document is very important, but we also can include 
the names of the contributors in, into the relevancy. Uh, so if you search for for some uh, name like my name or your name, then it will find the documents despite the fact that your name is not directly uh, contained in the body text because you are just the author of the document or something like that. You contribute. Uh, another question. Yes. Area of, of uh, community uh, projects, uh, one very often has to handle with, with issues. And one issue uh, often consists of uh, Jira, uh, of uh, GitHub pull requests, and some, some forum threads, for yeah. example, and maybe uh, Project uh, Bugzilla. Is there a way? Uh, in searches code that these uh, three, four links go presented together when I search for something that is clearly uh, related to all of them? Yeah, well, yes, I mean, uh, <laughs> I mean, no, that is, um, <laughs> uh, well, yes. No, anyway, <laughs> oh, no. uh, it should be, uh, I did. We didn't do this kind of linking for now, I think. Yeah, I mean, those th those entities are not linked together uh, by default, but you can limit the search uh, search criterions for your query where you say, okay, I'm interested only for content for this project. And as long as your uh, data are mapped correctly to your project, then you will be automatically searching through uh, Jira issues, GitHub pull requests, uh, mailing lists, if they are mapped to this particular project, right? Okay, maybe we should yeah. continue. Yeah, <laughs> maybe just one thing, one last thing I, I would like to show you is, uh, I, I was uh, right now searching for Sane, uh, which Sane Granovero is our colleague. And one thing I want to show you that Searchesco provides you on top of uh, traditional search engines is this. Right on the screen, we can see two search results, and both of them are produced by, by Sana Greenovero. So how is it possible? And even the avatar picture is different. So are we really talking about two different persons? And the answer is no, it's, it's the same person, uh, but he is using many, uh, many different uh, accounts for creating uh, content. And in this case, we did a mistake, and we did not realize that this, uh, this entity is, uh, in simple words, not mapped directly to this one. It is possible to do it. Searchesco can do it. You okay, can so we will talk about it yeah. just now, about normalization of data. Yeah. So, but I, I want to say that we can solve it. And probably this account already uh, gathers uh, data from several accounts. We just missed this one. Okay. Okay, so we will... Uh, we'll go back to the presentation and we should start to talk about uh, some features and how we do, for example, data normalization. Because uh, even your question was about uh, data normalization. We, we, when we <laughs> so some features we will talk about. And first is uh, data normalization. By the way, don't try to read the JSON. It yeah. would kill you. It's just that. Uh, because <laughs> your, your question about linking, it's about data. You need th this information uh, to, to, to do the linking. So this is one of the features we are trying to resolve by Searchisco. So first, when <coughs> we need to do data normalization, then we, you need to define some basic structure of documents. So we created some system fields which have to be present in all documents. And as you can uh, see, some, uh, some, mandat some important fields for normalization are uh, type, of, type of content, project, contributors, and for example, activity dates. And when the content arrives into Searchisco, you have to do some normalization to transform identifiers used for this field to same values. For example, uh, the San Bernardo probably for now has two identifiers and we have no correct configuration for the normalization part. So, so, uh, so, so with this principle, we can create some new system field for linking of related content, but we need some way how to, how to detect the content is related during the uh, pro process of inserting that data into search scope. 
Uh, so, first part of normalization is some common fields in the content. Uh, second part of normalization is definition of content providers. So for each content provider, who wants to pu push our data into searches code or we want to pull data from, we have to define uh, some configuration file where we define the types of content provided by this, by this provider and then we define some preprocessing or some uh, preprocessing for the content. So when content arrives, we run a set of preprocessors on it to make the normalization of data. And you have to do some analysis when the new content provider is added or new content type for existing content provider is added to look which data you get from the provider and how to do the mapping. And then you can configure this set of preprocessors for the normalization. Um, the main preprocessor we use for uh, uh, projects normalization and contributors normalization is based on some lookup, lookups to mapping, type, mapping objects. We have configurations for uh, projects and contributors which contain definition of distinct identifiers from distinct, distinct systems. For example, there is uh, a definition of contributor it contains some email addresses because from some system you get data with email addresses only. It contains definition of username in jboss.org website, username from GitHub, and uh, other set of, of, uh, of identifiers. And when data arrives from some provider, we can do lookup over this mapping uh, configuration object to get normalized code, and then we place this code into content in the defined field. And this, this way, we do the normalization over, over projects and over, on, over contributors. Um, maintain these mapping tables is not easy. <laughs> it's uh, hard work. But, for example, it should be par uh, partially um, automated because we have some uh, user profiles for JBoss.org when user can uh, set their, their email addresses, their GitHub usernames. So we are able to take this part of this configuration, mapping information, for example, from some external systems for some profile of user, which is, uh, which is automatically created by the user. And another part of normalization is we have to solve in Searchisco is when the mapping table is changed for some user. For example, as we saw the um, Sane Grenoveros we, uh, problem, we can patch the mapping configuration for this user. Then we have to run some renormalization task, which is able to patch all data in the Searchisco and create a, uh, and patch the, uh, the problem with the duplicate data. So uh, this normalization of the data is not easy. And uh, this is how we solve it in, in the search school. Yeah. What Vlastimil right now said is that with the example of two different accounts with Sane Grinovero, what would be needed to fix it is just push updated uh, uh, specification for the contributor and run background task that will re-index automatically all the data, relevant data, and it's all done through the REST API. So, it, I mean, it's hard to explain, but it's very simple to fix. <laughs> okay. Okay, it's my part. So, yeah. how much time do we have? Ten minutes? Oh, it's, 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 okay, so we will be fair. So, um, this is what I have uh, sh show you the example about. We have REST API. So all the searches code has open API. It's a REST-based API. It's a, it's very simple to.